Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy here today for Lawn Fawn and in today's video we are going to be making a Christmas magic picture changer. I'm going to start out my card by doing some Copic coloring. I'm using the images from the Ho 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 Holidays stamp set. I stamped the images in jet black ink onto Lawn Fawn's white cardstock, which is great for Copic coloring. I will have all of my colors listed on the screen as well, so if you'd like to use the same colors, they will be available there for you. I did try to use some of the same colors throughout, so for the uh, present sack and the deer, I used E27, 25, 23, and E21. On the face, I did use E43, E42, and E41, and then a little bit of W5 and W7 for the hooves. Now for the greens, I'm going to be using YG17, 25, and 23. On the sleigh here, I did add in a YG21 for a nice bright highlight. Now don't mind that the Santa is colored. I forgot I didn't need him on here. So <laughs> I kind of skipped over that part because I will be coloring the Santa later in the video. Now for the reds, I'm using R59, R37, and R24. I also did E13 and E02 for the face. And I used C3, C2, and C1 for Mrs. Claus's hair. Once I finish my coloring, I'm just going to set that off on the side for now and work on my magic picture changer scene. So I use, I like to use the magic picture changer die to kind of set up uh, my image in my, on my cardstock only because I want to make sure I'm leaving enough room to die cut that out. So my first Santa I'm doing upside down because I wanted to have his feet sticking out of the chimney. And then using the smaller portion of the magic picture changer, I lined that up on the cardstock, lined up my image, and then stamped that down in the jet black ink as well. Now I'm also going to create a mask, and this is using the full sticky notes that Lawn of Fallen carries. And this is great because the entire thing is nice and sticky, and it will uh, provides a great mask for my image when I do my ink blending. Then I can just take some scissors and fussy cut that out. I'm going to leave an edge around my Santa. This is going to make it look like I die cut him out so it'll match the rest of my images on my card. Then just taking the coordinating dies, lining them up with my original panel where I colored the images, hold them down with some purple tape and run that through the die cut machine. Next, I'm going to work on my background for my card. Now, I'm actually going to repeat this step. So I'll have two panels ink blended the same way. I'm only going to show you just one on screen for now. I'm going to be using Worn Lipstick Festive Berries. And I had started with Barn Door, but then switched to Aged Mahogany because Barn Door just wasn't giving me enough of a contrast in the colors. And I'm using the Lawn Fawn White cardstock to ink blend. I'm not going all the way down to the bottom because I know I'm going to have my rooftop there, so I don't need to ink blend that part. So starting with the Festive Berries, I'm sorry, starting with the Worn Lipstick, then the Festive Berries, and then I'll switch into the Aged Mahogany, and I'll have a really nice gradual transition of colors. You can totally do the blues for the background, which is typically what I would do, uh, for the nighttime sky, I just thought red was a really nice change up for my background. I like to kind of keep things interesting on my cards. And then I can just go back and forth over my colors with my life-changing blender brushes to even out that transition. I have both of my panels shown here, and I'm just spritzing that with some clean water. And I'll dab that up with a paper towel. That just adds a little bit of interest to the background, almost like there is snow. And now we can work on some ink blending with our images that'll be in the Magic Picture Changer. So I decided to wait on the coloring. I'm going to do my ink blending first. So I'm starting off by putting my mask down on my Santa. And then I'll ink blend the background with the same colors that I did, uh, except for the dark one. So I did Worn Lipstick and Festive Berries. 
just a really quick ink blend, nothing fancy. I just kind of wanted it to match my background. And I knew it wouldn't be high up enough on the card that I needed that aged mahogany. So then removing the mask and using that on my other panel. And I'll do the same thing. I'll just ink blend that with the same colors, making sure that you're covering your area well enough to have it all included in the picture changer. You don't want to have any uh, empty spots of color. Once my ink blending is done and I remove the mask, I'm gonna start Copic coloring my Santa image. And I am gonna use the same colors that I did on the Mrs. Claus. I love removing that mask and I love that white edge. It just, it really works with the rest of my card. So I'm starting off with my darkest color, which is the R59, blend out with the R37 and then a little highlight area, the R24. Now for the belt buckle, I didn't do any ink blending there. I just did a straight yellow because the area is so small and I didn't do a lot on the beard and mustache either. I did just a little bit of my cool grays enough to show that there is color there. And on my Santa, I only colored uh, the bottom half of him, but I do come in later on and color a little bit more because he kind of stuck out a little more than I anticipated. So then taking the magic picture changer, lining up my image where I want it to go, holding it down with the purple tape, and then I will run these both through my die cutting machine. I'm also going to die cut one of those ink blended panels that we did, we had done two of them, and this is actually using that frame. This is the Magic Picture Changer add-on. And so I'm gonna run that through my die cut machine as well. Then I'm just taking my Magic Picture Changer items. I'm just kind of wiggling them, making sure that they're loose. I'll take some anti-static powder tool, sprinkle that onto the back. This is gonna help make our picture changer slide a lot more easier once we get it moving. And also, the more you uh, slide it, the easier it'll be. Then I'm taking the double-sided tape from Lawn Fawn and I'm lighting both of those skinny strips on the edges, that's gonna be our track. There are score lines there, and actually I found that lining it first with the double-sided tape and then folding it over was a lot easier. Uh, it didn't become uneven. A lot of times I have issues where my track is uneven in the inside. So I found that putting that double-sided tape on first was really helpful. Then I had just removed the backing and closed down those flaps for the inside. I put in my magic picture changer and I'm just weaving those slots together and then just getting that warmed up, making sure that it works. And then I'll come in and I do dust it just one more time from the back. If I do it in the front, I found that I kinda dimmed down my ink blending, so I just did it from the back with the powder. And then once I have that straightened in perfectly centered in my track, I'll go ahead and remove the backing of the double-sided tape and close that shut. So our interactive portion is done. Now to decorate the rest of our house, I die cut some pieces of cardstock. This is using the rooftop border and I die cut several pieces from Narwhal and Storm Cloud cardstock. I also have the chimney cut from chili pepper and the top portion of the chimney is cut from pixie dust cardstock. I'm taking an R89 Copic marker and I'm coloring in those lines just to give a little more interest to that chimney. And then I can glue the top of my chimney down right away. I kind of do this in sections just depending how my scene is going. Now I can attach some of my rooftop pieces together. So I will layer this uh, every other color, and I do about four. I'm just adding a little bit of the liquid glue to the top. So I have about four of them here. This is gonna go on the front of the card. We do have some excess hanging there that I'll trim off later on. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm attaching my add-on, so the frame that goes on top of my Magic Picture Changer. I just added the adhesive to the corners and on the long strip, 
and attached that down. So I'm putting that off on the side. So I said, I'm kind of working in sections here, just depending where I'm at in my scene. Now I'm using the mini string of lights and these are so cute. I die cut the string from Noble Fur cardstock. I have the backing of the lights with white cardstock and then I took the front of the light so it has the little gleam in it and I used just a variety of glitter cardstock from Lawn Fawn. And then when, there's two different ways you can attach these. The first way here is using the Xyron sticker maker. I used my tweezers to put those little lights in it, pulled that through, and then they're all, they all have sticky on the back automatically. So you can remove the release paper and it's like a sticker. Or you can do it this way where you just put dots of glue down and then add the pieces on top. So two different ways, whichever you find easier. I do think using the Xyron sticker maker is a lot easier just because it's already backed. I don't have to worry about a, you know how well the coverage is. It's all set to go. And then I can just line that up on top of my lights. So I have that really nice white gleam back there and I'll go uh, kind of in a pattern. So red, gold, green, and blue. And I love that blue for the light. It is so pretty. So I'll finish those off. And now I'm starting to put my scene together. So I took our ink blended panel and I add, actually added some of the storm cloud that's kind of going to go behind my rooftop pieces here. So I just added some adhesive to my rooftop. And that cardstock I had already laid down kind of completes the scene. I don't have any red or white hanging out down there. So once I push that down, I'll go ahead and trim off that excess. And then I can go ahead and add our lights. So the, one of the reasons I do this in sections is just so I know where everything is going and where everything fits. It does take me a little longer, but I just found this a lot easier when I kind of do it in sections. So this kind of completes our background. And then I can figure out exactly where my magic picture changer is going to go, how high I want it, where I need the chimney to be. I also had die cut some extra pieces from that rooftop border, glued those together and adding those to the bottom of my magic picture changer. Kind of makes our scene blend in with the background. And then I can line those up and they line up perfectly with the front of my card. And that is, I had already went ahead and glued my sleigh and my Mrs. Claus in there with the reindeer to kind of save some time. I did already go ahead and put adhesive just at the bottom of my chimney and glued that down. Now I'm just adding a little bit of my festive berries to that pull tab that's going to pull out. And I have the indicator here die cut from pixie dust cardstock i wanted a little bit more glitter on here so i i love the pixie dust cardstock it's definitely one of my favorite cardstocks and it works so great for snow now that i'm ready to add my picture changer to my card i'm going to line that with double-sided tape i'm sorry with foam tape I need to make sure I'm leaving some room so that when you want to pull that tab up, you have some room back there. So that's why we're adding a layer of foam tape behind that. Then I can line up my rooftop pieces and just push that down. I'm adding a little bit of glue just to the reindeer and a little bit on the sleigh. I don't want this to glue down to the picture changer. It can have glue and attach to the chimney, but not the behind piece with the Santa. And then I'll go ahead and give this a test run. And once I'm sure everything is moving wonderfully, I'm going to work on a sentiment. Now off screen, I did go ahead and die cut a winter wavy sayings from cilantro cardstock. And I white heat embossed a sentiment. And then there are some score lines here. So I'm going to fold over and then up. And this creates a really fun banner. And I'm going to go ahead and add adhesive to that back flag piece the middle will kind of pop up and actually afterwards off screen I did go ahead and sneak some small foam squares behind the Merry Christmas portion because it was really starting to bubble up so it does still have some dimension to it which is really cool but adding the foam squares kind of helps control how 
high it's bubbling up there. So a really fun sentiment banner if you haven't tried these out yet. And there's a look at our really fun magic picture changer. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time.